All right, good morning, everybody. It's great to see you on a beautiful Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning is a beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little drizzly, but uh, lots of wonderful energy here. I'm going to tell you all about that in just a minute. Uh, before the announcements, would you please stand and greet one another? All right. Nice job on the greetings. Good job, good job. Okay, this is a special Sunday for two reasons. Uh, first, it is Youth Sunday. For many, many, many years, yeah, okay, nice. Very good. I love the cheers. Uh, for many, many years, our youth have led us in worship on uh, sometime around this Sunday every year, usually in February. Um, it is the kick off to their telethon fundraiser for a mission trip, and Kinsey's going to tell you more about that, and there is a table out there if you want to donate to the mission trip. Um, and the, the unique thing about this particular year is that the, the youth were hands-on from the very beginning, so they wrote the affirmation of faith, and you'll hear it's very faithful and expresses everything that we have taught them about the faith. Um, they've written the prayers of the people. Obviously, the preachers have uh, written their words to share with us. They didn't write, joyful, joyful, we adore thee, but uh, they, did, <laughs> they did choose, joyful, joyful, we adore thee, as well as, as, well as the closing hymn. So it's, uh, it's truly a youth Sunday in that regard. Uh, it is also a Scout Sunday, which is a United Methodist tradition. The United Methodist Church has had a long uh, relationship with the scouting movement, we actually are home to um, a Boy Scout troop or a Scouting USA troop and a Cub Scout pack. And to, Troop 261, uh, who was our, the one we house here, would you guys just stand so we can greet you and thank you for being here? We love Scouts. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, and we also host a Cub Scout Pack, Pack 200. Are we got some, do we have some Pack 200 folks here? Where are y'all? There we go, back there. Everybody, thank you. Now, the Scouts and uh, the folks who have the bowls, that is for the Super Bowl of Caring, which is a fundraiser that we do on Super Bowl Sunday every year uh, to, for hunger relief. That's the the kids and adults in uniform with the bowls, and that's different than the youth telethon uh, table, which is over there. Lots of ways to give money. We're also going to do a regular offertory, so, you know, just, it's one of those, it's one of those Sundays. Um, I always like to do this. So, if, even if you're not in, in 261 or 200, you could be a scout in another pack, troop, or Girl Scouts. We don't, ho we don't host a, a Girl Scout uh, group but I know there are a lot of Girl Scouts here. So youth and children, kiddos, anyone who was involved in the scouting movement, kids, please stand. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Good job, you guys. And we're gonna offer a special prayer for scouting here shortly. Um, I always love to do this too. Adults, if you were a Girl Scout, Boy Scout, Brownie, We Below, Cub, whatever, um, or if you assist your own kids or grandkids in their uh, scouting journey, would you please stand? And I love that visual because it shows the impact of scouting um, on, our, on our culture and our country. So thank you for that. Last thing, scouting related, if you received, uh, if you are a gold award honoree or an Eagle Scout, would you please stand? Yeah. 
Awesome. Great job. Okay. Uh, thank you for being flexible to come all the way down to the um, side of the building with the lights on. That's helpful. Uh, we had hoped that the, the electricity in the sanctuary would be back up on Friday. They are still waiting on a part, but they were able to repair the bus bar. Anybody who's, I don't even know what I'm saying, but that's what they told me that they were able to do. <laughs> so uh, that's a good thing. And hopefully we'll have the lights on tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, if we have to adjust the Ash Wednesday schedule, we'll let you know. So Ash Wednesday is already on Wednesday, but before then, on Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday or Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras. Um, we are going to have a pancake dinner. I'm not sure that we've ever done this, or if we have, it hadn't been in a long time. So that'll be over in the Sports and Rec Center, 6 to 7 p.m. We do need you to uh, register for that, please, so our uh, volunteers know how many pancakes to make. There's going to be a pancake artist here. I mentioned that last week. Um, and it is a fundraiser for our Serving Others ministry. So uh, that'll be a great event. And then the next day is Ash Wednesday. And the plan, if um, the electricians are able to get their work done, is that the children's service will be here in uh, Underwood Hall. And the traditional service will be in the sanctuary. So that is the start of Lent. And if you want to go to cumc.com slash Lent, you can find information about our studies. You can sign up for our devotionals if you're not yet getting those um, and just kind of see the plan for Lent. All right, I know that's a lot um, by way of announcement. The kids have done a great job planning. We're gonna get out of here in time, so no worries. Um, the flowers here on the chancel are given uh, in memory of Melissa Sandoval on her birthday by her family. So blessed be her name. All right. Please join me in the prayer for scouting. O oh God, your will is that all your children should grow into fullness of life. We lift to you the ministry of scouting. We offer you thanks for camping to teach us that the world is our great home, for study and work to build character, for service to see our responsibility to those in need for encouragement in responsible citizenship and vital faith. Bless the work of scouting in this place and around the world that through its efforts, the young may, like our Lord, increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with you and all people. Amen.
written by our youth group. I believe in God, who loves unconditionally. I believe that love is patient and kind. I believe that we shall strive to be more like Jesus. I believe that we should love our neighbors all the same. I believe that God is love, and whoever believes in love believes in God, and God believes in them. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are eternally grateful for God loving us no matter what. Glory to God. Amen. Please be seated. Children can come join us right here on the floor. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so me and all of us are going to ask you a few questions. As we all know, Valentine's Day is in a few days. So, yep. The first question I'm going to ask is, who is someone that you love or that loves you? It's good. Yep, your mom, definitely. Mm-hmm. Jesus, definitely. What about you? Mm-hmm. Your family, that's a great answer. Yeah. Now, can you tell us why you love them? Because they're real. Because they're real? Good. Noah? Because they what? They take care of you? Because you? they're nice? Because she puts up with you? So, you know who's someone else who loves us? Some of you already said it. Jesus! Jesus! Yes, that's right. And you know how Jesus loves everybody? We should also strive to love everybody just like God does. All right, guys. So, as we head out, we have these Valentine lollipop things. Kids are going to come first, but I want y'all to grab two, okay? Okay. Now you're going to keep one and give the other one to someone that loves you. All right, come on up. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait. wait. Yes. Okay, before we're going to pray, please bow your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for loving us so much. Please help that whoever we meet, we can share that love with them. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me With your heart and lead me In your love to those around me And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken i will build my life upon your love a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Hello. 
My name is Max Dowd, and I am a junior at Frisco Liberty High School. One of my favorite things to do every summer is to go on youth choir tour. This past year, we went to New Mexico, mainly in the Santa Fe, Albuquerque area. We did lots of incredible things. We sang at churches, we went whitewater rafting, we sang the national anthem at the Albuquerque Isotopes minor league baseball game, and we did an awesome service project at an after-school facility for underserved kids in rural New Mexico. One of my favorite days of the whole trip started with going to White Sands National Park. I had an absolute blast walking around the desert on the hunt for the best sand dune to sled down. It was one of my favorite national parks, and as you know if you listen to my dad talk for longer than about 20 minutes, our family absolutely loves the National Park Service. <laughs> After this, we went to perform a concert in a little town called Cloudcroft at the Methodist Church there, complete with a delicious meal from the church ladies, Methodist style. It was a great concert, and on the way back down the mountains, we were treated to a beautiful sunset. Eventually, people started to doze off, tired from our big day, and it got pretty quiet. So I stood up and uh, my legs were a little sore from the week of adventures and for sitting for so long. And so I stood up and went behind the seat. I had sat near the back of the bus to guard the restrooms. <laughs> and while I was back there, I noticed that a senior was on the trip wasn't on her phone or listening to music. So I asked her a question that had been on my mind. And we'll come back to that later. I will now read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse 28. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he, Jesus, answered them well, he, the scribe, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And then Nolan and Maddie are going to let you know Jesus' reply a little bit later. So I've always loved this verse for two reasons. First, because I imagine it as our conversations about sports now, but about Jewish law. So now, instead of asking about the greatest of all time or the goat of the 613 commandments, asking Jesus his opinion, we ask our slightly less cool teacher who they think the goat is of the 4,374 NBA players who have ever played on an NBA team. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? It's Michael Jordan. Can I get an amen? amen. There we go. <laughs> But the main reason I love this verse is because Jesus is someone that you're allowed to ask questions to. I mean, this scribe had to have been pretty well versed in the law, and even he asked questions. And Jesus didn't rebuke him, he answered, inviting us through his response to also explore our faith for ourselves and ask questions. So back to the bus. I had asked her a deep, faith-based question. She considered it and gave me a very insightful answer. So I asked another one, and then she asked a question, and we launched into a full-blown faith conversation. It was dark outside, and this darkness allowed us to be vulnerable and discuss our questions, finding out the answers for ourselves by talking through it. And I have no doubt that the Holy Spirit was with us. But these weren't exactly icebreaker questions. I mean, we were discussing topics like the existence of hell and the devil, the fate of Judas and other historical figures, and exploring the nuance of our interpretation of Bible stories. This conversation started with about three people, but as others heard what we were talking about, they joined with their opinions and questions they wanted help answering. These are students from every grade on the trip, with even an adult chaperone bringing her insight. This conversation continued for over an hour until we pulled into the, church par oh, into the hotel parking lot. I think this ability to have an open conversation was cultivated specifically by the nightly devotionals we had on choir tour, where we discussed some big topics, and everyone was heard out as the group talked and talked and talked. <laughs> I'm grateful that our choir and youth group has been able to cultivate a culture where the youth, myself included, feel comfortable to explore our faith and confident enough to know that what we have to say is valuable. This is one of my favorite memories because it is a perfect microcosm of our community. Moments like this are where our relationships with each other are strengthened and our relationships with God are deepened. And let me just say, this year's choir tour is in early July, early July so keep that in mind. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nolan. I go to Plano East and I'm a senior. Um, next part of our reading is going to be Mark 12, 29 and 30. Jesus answered, the first is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. 
and with all your mind and with all your strength. Amen. So what is loving God? Have you sat down and wondered what exactly it means to love God? And in what ways? Is it service? Is it just showing up for church? Is it going on missions? One way to love God is helping with Vacation Bible School, or VBS. It's one thing to come to VBS as a child, but what I've loved is volunteering with VBS as a youth. Each year, our youth group is asked to help with VBS, and I've loved doing it. <clears throat> Kids show up for a couple hours each day of the week, and they don't realize what they're doing, playing games, talking with friends, singing, but they don't realize they're creating a stronger bond with people around them and also with God. A couple years ago, I was a group leader for one of the third grade groups for the week. The theme was Discover on Adventure Island. Adventure Island. This was also right after COVID, so everyone was still used to being at home, talking with people they knew, not getting out much. So there was one really shy kid at the beginning of the week. By the Throughout the week, playing games like water balloons, making artworks to take home, and singing songs. And by the end of the week, he ended up opening up more and more. And by the time the end of the week came, he was almost friends with everybody in the group. This relates back to the idea of loving God. This shows how much VBS can change someone. This also shows how impactful loving God can be. It's also, if you take time to love God, so much better end up with meeting new people and also make the time that you have. I've seen so many kids at the beginning of VBS or just anything to do with church go from not talking or being with their small groups of friends and by the end of the week or by the end of the day, kind of being talked to everybody and getting along with everybody. VBS, I feel like, is one of those kids that kid, one of those things that kids look forward to each year. Maybe just not the kids though. The youth love helping out maybe probably the best out of it. The adults get a couple of hours of the week to themselves. <laughs> so it's one for everybody. VBS is transformative, drawing everyone involved closer to God. Maybe I'll see you at VBS this year. Okay, hi everyone, my name is Madison. And I'm going to be reading Mark 12, 31. So it says, the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So like I said, my name is Madison, and I'm a senior at Hebron High School, which is in Louisville. I've always grown up going to this church, and I used to come as a baby and would get dropped off while my parents would attend service because I was too young to go. Once I was old enough, I started to go with them, and I went to Sunday school every single week. Um, by sixth grade, I had one of the closest friend groups I had ever had in dance, in school, and in church. Our Sundays would always consist of waking up, going to church, and then going to get lunch or coffee after. Then in about eighth grade, they stopped showing up as much. I soon figured out that they decided to go to a different church with all their school friends. I felt very alone. I felt like everything had changed for me and I was so lost. I decided to follow my friends and try out this new church. I only attended for about a month, but something just was not right. So today we've been talking a lot about love. I still loved my friends at this new church. They all loved God and so did I. So what could be missing? Fast forward a little bit, I decided to come back to Christ United, which was one of the best decisions I had ever made. I was hesitant and scared that I'd be judged when I came for the first time, but to my surprise, I was welcomed here with open arms. I've always gone on mission trips like APA, but it wasn't until APA last year that truly changed my life. So on APA, what we do is we travel to some less fortunate neighborhoods and kind of fix up their houses for them. So this might be repairing wood and repainting it, or it could be building a wheelchair ramp. So on my site last year, this was Max and I, and um, what we did was we scraped all the paint, we repainted their house and repaired some wood. So with these groups, we get split into, we get split randomly, and we're with them for the rest of the week. This trip consisted of so much love and joy, not only from the youth and volunteers, but also from the homeowners. It was truly unbelievable. On this trip, I was able to make so many new friendships as well as strengthen the ones that I already had. 
On my site, our days consisted of about 70% working, 30% having water gun fights, singing, and playing with the little girls who lived there. So there were three little girls that would always sit outside with us, and what they would do, no matter how hot it was, they always had a smile on our face, on their face, whether that was laughing at us because we were singing extra loud, or if that was because they liked the song and they were singing with us, but it was a really cool experience that I hadn't gotten before. Um, after the long, hot, tiring hot, did I mention hot? <laughs> We would all come back together and play some very intense games of volleyball, card games like ERS, and of course, worship God together. We also got to go on some small excursions that consisted of so much love. We went to an arcade that had putt-putt, laser tag, and go-karts. There were some kids there that waited in line, but once they got to the front, they realized they were too short to ride by themselves. So this was a kid named Daniel that we met in line, so we all took turns driving this boy around who was so excited and grateful that he gave us some dum-dums in return. <laughs> we also got to go to Bass Pro Shop in Memphis, where some of us might have explored a little bit too much and opened up a container of real dead fish bait just to see what it smelled like. It was terrible, obviously. But they ended up buying it because they felt bad just putting it back on the shelves. It was so disgusting, we all told him to throw it away immediately. Every moment on this trip was full of love. Well, maybe not the part where I was the one who ended up getting that container of fish in my Appanote bag and had to ride with it for the whole seven hours home. Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> so, but seriously, this trip connected me back to the church family, which is a community where even if you don't know who's sitting right in front of you, you still love them. This church has something very special and I'm so glad that I get to be a part of it. We're a church community where we don't just love the people invested in this church. We're not a community where we just love the church communities. We're people who show love to everyone we can. Loving others does not just mean your family. It also doesn't just mean your friends. It doesn't mean loving the people sitting right next to you and right in front of you. Loving your neighbor as yourself means spreading the love that you have to every single person. It doesn't matter what they've done in the past, everyone deserves to be shown love, and that starts with us. Thank you.
We come now to our time of prayers of the people written by our youth group. After each prayer is offered, I invite you to respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. We pray for all those who need a glimpse of the love of Jesus. We pray for those without shelter or food and for those who don't feel safe. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who feel lonely, those who feel anxious, and for those that are in a time of transition. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those seeking forgiveness and for those needing acceptance. And we pray for our peace throughout the world. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, I'm Kenzie Erickson and I get the absolute honor of being the director of Youth Ministries. And I think uh, my cry total is up to like five at this point. Um, I've been very emotional all morning because these youth have just worked so incredibly hard to make this service something special to give back to you all, our congregation. And it's really such a great representation of how they serve throughout the year. And speaking of which, this Youth Sunday serves as our kickoff for our annual spring fundraiser, which is our youth telethon, which funds our mission trips. And so in a minute, we'll have a video to show you so you can see a little bit more about that. But as we give our general church offering, there are many ways to give. You can give in the offering plates that are being passed soon. You can give online, Venmo at Christ United. Um, we're so thankful in the ways that you serve. And if you would like to donate to our telethon, you can either pick up the phone this week, or you can head out to the table in the atrium to give as well. Thanks so much. Your call has been... Voicemail again! Hello? Hi. W would you like to make a donation to support our youth mission trips? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Just, just $25. No, this is not a scam. Thank you for your donation. We got one! We got one! We got one. Our Youth Telethon fundraiser supports our annual summer high school and middle school mission trips, a time-honored tradition that has gone on in our youth program for many years. This year, our high schoolers will be going to Costa Rica with strong missions, and our middle school will be going to Arkansas through Ozark Mission Project. We are so excited to continue serving others and spreading God's love with your help. All of our donations will go towards much needed supplies and scholarships. During this week in February, our church members will be receiving a call from one of our youth asking for a financial 
financial commitment. Church members have the opportunity to purchase one or more $25 mission shares to help cover the cost of our trip. Thank you so much for your support and remember to pick up the phone. Woo! who gave generously and for those who will receive it may our gifts and service be used to love Jesus the way that Christ has loved us we are thankful for the support of family and friends who build us up in faith for our youth ministry and the friendship it provides 
and we are grateful for the leaders and their dedication to nurturing us in the faith. We are thankful for the witness of our youth in the world. Amen. So, um, man, I got a lot of thoughts on Youth Sunday. You know, I started out in ministry, in youth ministry, and one of the things that I loved most about the United Methodist Church uh, is the fact that we're, we're committed to our mission, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. That's our big, fancy mission. But what that comes down to is uh, raising kids in the faith and then helping nurture them throughout their whole lives. Uh, Y'all have clearly done a great job <laughs> with these kids, and we do it a lot of ways. Yep, yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm struck by the confidence of kids. Uh, I'm not sure I could have done what they do, or what they did and do uh, when I was their age, but um, there are some that are uh, preachers, maybe preachers in the making. I don't know. We'll see how that works out. Um, we have those that have beautiful voices and are confident enough to share it with the congregation. We have uh, kids who can play the harp, of all things, and the flute we're going to hear in a minute. Um, most importantly to me, we have kids who are deeply faithful. <laughs> that's our job, and that's what we've done as a congregation. So thank you for all the ways you bless them. Uh, I'm going to ask all the kids to come up now, and not just the kids, but everybody who volunteers with the youth. Um, our Sunday school teachers, Sunday night youth, volunteers, um, chaperones for any of our activities. And we're out in plenty of time to get ready for Super Bowl parties. Go Chiefs. Um, <laughs> um, let's, let's show them uh, how much we appreciate their faith. Great job, you guys. And now, all y'all untangle for just a minute, and let's give them applause for the ways they support you. So the youth benediction is from number six. Normally when we're in the sanctuary for traditional services, we sing this at the end of the service. Um, we're, our post flute today is instead going to be Ashley playing the flute. But uh, if you know the youth benediction, you're welcome to say it with us. All right, y'all ready? <laughs> 